Jesus, he heals all my diseases. Wherever God's people are found, wherever prayer does abound, the glory of the Lord will shine upon us. We can be free and feel his power, so lift your hands in this hour. Let God's healing power come upon you. Praise the Lord. God bless you for tuning in tonight for this Thursday Bible study. I trust you've had a fantastic week and that this service finds you in the blessings of God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we go into the Bible lesson. Father, thank you tonight for the privilege of studying your word. Oh, Holy Spirit, disclose the word of God to us. Give unto us that that we need, I pray. Strengthen your people. Encourage your people. Lay your hand upon us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. I want you to turn to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 tonight. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. And I want to speak on the thought of working from above. Working from above. And Paul simply says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Where are the spiritual blessings? In the heavenly places in Christ. You don't get the blessing if you don't go to the heavenlies. You don't get the blessings and the revelation if you don't go up. So we want to talk about that tonight. We want to talk about what Paul said. He echoed the same idea. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be carnally minded to death. What does it mean to be spiritually minded? It means to pray. To pray in the Holy Spirit. To pray in tongues. Your mysteries. That, that you speak to God. And to go up to the high places. And uh, this is the great privilege that we have as God's people. We don't live relegated by this world and its systems and what we see and what we know on the news media outlets and what we can prognosticate for ourselves for the future. We live by the knowledge and the word of Almighty God who is above all, through all, in all, working all in all for His people. He knows it all. He's calling all the shots. He's orchestrating every move. He's watching this planet and orchestrating down to the last detail everything that's happening. And when we go up into the heavenly realms, as Paul talked about here, we get that blessing. We get that presence. We get that anointing. We get that endowment with power. We start understanding things that we didn't understand before. So the Holy Spirit raises us up as we pray in the Spirit, raises us up into heavenly places far above the conflict. Amen. I like the idea of working from above. Working from above. Because in your five natural senses, it's in the natural man. We don't work from above. We work from below. We work down here. We're nose to nose. We can't see tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen next week. But when we go up in the realm of the Spirit, where Christ is, we get blessed in the heavenly places in Christ. I remember a, a friend of mine told me one time about being in the Hawaiian Islands and especially on the island of Maui. And he told me that he was on vacation and that he took a, a helicopter flight. And in that helicopter flight, they flew over the road to Hana. Now, the, the, the road to Hana is a famous road. I don't know how many miles it is, 30 or 40 miles, and it's full of switchbacks, continuous switchbacks. And uh, there's all these scenic places along the way. But, you know, it's a precarious road. And he said that he was flying in this helicopter and could see the road to Hana below him. And there was a, a, a man in a truck that was going slow, and there was a tourist right behind him. And, and the tourist was right up on his bumper and, and wanted to pass. He could see that he wanted to, and he was crowding him. But the man in the truck could only go so fast, and it was full of switchbacks. 
And he said, you know, the thing that I had was the vantage point of being above. And I could see that there wasn't another road, another car on that road coming towards them for miles and miles. I couldn't even see another approaching car. Anytime he wanted to, he could have passed that truck, but he couldn't see around the bend. It was just one switchback after another. And it was like suicide for him to just jump out and on a switchback go around, he might run into someone head on. And so the guy was just going very, very slow behind this truck. And he said, I thought, if you knew what I knew, you would whiz around that truck and go on and enjoy your vacation. Well, that's kind of the way it is when we go up in prayer, in the spirit, in heavenly realms, in the heavenly places, with Christ, we get to work from above. We get to see things that we can't see from other vantage points. We see things spiritually. We know things spiritually. God starts speaking and revealing his plan and his will, his purpose. And things begin to change because our perspective begins to change. Man, if for no other reason than uh, to pray in the Holy Spirit, then just this one reason, it's worth it every day. Puts joy in your heart. Puts a smile on your face. Why? You go up. You get above the opposition. You get above the taunts of the devil. And you enjoy the perspective of eternity looking back upon this earth. Amen. You know, we all go through trials, but our attitude on them has to be that we can negotiate them in victory if we go up and above them. We can call our trials what Paul did, light afflictions. Why would Paul call his trials light afflictions? You know, he was stoned. He was beaten with rods. He was in shipwreck. He was in and out of jail constantly. And he called it light affliction. Wow, how could you do such a thing? Because he had been taken up into the third heaven. And he said, I was, whether I was in the body or out of the body, I don't know. But I saw things that are unutterable. I couldn't even speak about them. They were so wonderful. Because of the abundance of the revelation, he got a perspective that gave him such joy and peace that it didn't matter what he went through on this earth. There was so much joy. These light afflictions, because he saw the joy of eternity in heaven, he called everything that he endured on this earth light affliction. If Paul called his light affliction, can we even call what we go through affliction at all? Compared to the glory that shall be revealed. Hallelujah. So this is... This is why we must maintain this walk with God. We can't go two days or four days or a week or two weeks without praying in the Spirit. We need the Holy Ghost to every day lift us, to take us up, to get us above. Now, the Bible talks about the warfare that we're in and that that warfare involves principalities and powers. In 2 Corinthians 10, Paul talks about the, the whole canopy of the heavens that's arrayed with spiritual dominion of darkness and, and spirits that work on the earth against the earth. But you know, that's just the second heaven. The third heaven is where God is. It's where eternity is. And uh, I remember talking to a man one time when I went to Kenya, and he was a prayer warrior, and he would pray hours a day. And I talked to him one time. I said, you know, you're an intercessor, and do you ever feel the opposition from the, the demons that are above, the principalities and the powers that are arrayed in the heavens? He said, oh, yes, every time. Every time I pray. He said, they initially come after me, and they begin to hit my mind or hit my body, or they begin to try to distract me, or they, he call, they call all, cause all kinds of things to happen to try to stop me. But he said, I've learned to pay no attention to them and I just keep going up higher and higher. And pretty soon I'm elevated and transported by the Holy Spirit into the heavenly realm and I'm beyond the realm of principalities and powers. And I am in that zone with heaven, that wonderful place with the Lord where I'm transported into the heavenly realms with the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Working from above is an escape mechanism as well as anything else. You know, I think about that. You know, we all get worn down. We all get worried. We all get afraid. We all get, get, 
get worn down to a nub. We, we, we get in the grind of this life and, and we all want something to relax with, something to get away. We want something that can give a respite from all the pressure that we're under. And, and I, I know vacations are good and a time away is good and a few days in another location and all of those kind of things, but they're nothing compared to the escape and after all, isn't that really why people go drink on the weekends? They want to escape. Isn't that why people take drugs recreationally or otherwise? Because they're looking for escapes. We, everybody wants to get away, to escape, to get away from everything. Well, when you pray in the Holy Spirit and God pulls you up into the realm of eternity with the Lord Jesus, and you begin to pray in the Spirit, and you speak mysteries to God, and God begins to communicate back to you. I tell you, you talk about an escape. You talk about a rest. You talk about a joy. You talk about happiness. There's nothing like being transported by the Spirit into the heavenlies. Amen. Up above. Up above it all. Hallelujah. And you know, Another aspect of this is when you're here on earth and you're just going through your day, maybe you're casually talking to God, you feel God, you feel his presence. But there's nothing like giving a, a dedicated, systematic approach to God. Lord, I'm going to give you this hour, this hour and a half, and I'm going to really pray and go up and go up and push through the opposition. I believe a lot of people never get past that opposition. They pray, they're distracted, they're yawning, their mind's wandering. Uh, the buzzer goes off on the laundry. The, the things happen and we kind of halfway make it, halfway hit, halfway miss. But I believe if we will learn to push past the opposition, go up into the heavenlies, really pray in the spirit, really connect to God. You know what I mean, really when you've had in times when you've really touched heaven and heaven has really touched you, there's a difference. There's a peace. There's a joy that's deeper than deep. And it carries you. It carries you. you it flows through you. You feel it. I want you to know that this is available for every one of us. And God wants us to go beyond the principalities and powers past the middle heavens, into the glory realm where the Holy Spirit rests and gives us rest, where there's joy unspeakable and full of glory. And we learn to be positive and joyful and confident. Because why? Talk about a psychological reset. Talk about a, a mind that's been recalculated, recalibrated, Brought back to zero, where you enjoy your life. Boy, there's nothing like God's presence to do that in your life. So I want to challenge you today. Hear these few words and apply these to your life. Learn to work from above. Learn to go up into the heavenlies. Learn to pray in the Spirit and to push past the opposition. Amen. The other day I was praying, I was over in the annex and and I got done, and the Lord said, you're not done. He said, I want you to pray another half hour. I've got some things I want to give you, and you haven't pushed through yet. And I knew exactly what he was saying. I had written a sermon. I would written an article. I would prayed a while. I had meditated. But God wanted me to push in spiritually through the Holy Spirit in prayer. you got to be willing to put the time in. There's no substitute for that. you got to be willing to put in the time, and God will meet you on a deeper and deeper level. Father, in the name of Jesus, encourage the heart of every child of God. Minister to them, I pray. Let your Holy Spirit give peace and joy in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you. I'll see you Sunday.